unyielding, technologically capable, ruthless, and insular. The Dark Angels at the time of the Horus Heresy would once again be a powerful and highly independent legion, used to operating on their own to conduct large-scale campaigns and compliance actions. Because of this, the fear of the First Legion's intervention led the machinations of the Warmaster Horus to ensure that when his treacherous plans came to fruition, the Dark Angels had been dispatched to the outer edges of the Imperium where they would be unable to interfere, at least for a time. As the Horus Heresy progressed, however, the power of this legion would make itself known, savaging the Night Lords of Thramas and going on to unleash destruction on an unprecedented scale during the later years of the Heresy when they crushed traitor world after traitor world across the southern galactic zone. The Suppression of the Gordian League During the 200th year of the Great Crusade, 998 M30, the Dark Angels Legion was carrying out an Imperial compliance campaign against the shield world of the so-called Gordian League, a confederation of human worlds who were allied with degenerate Xenos. During the seven Terran year-long campaign in 05 M31, the Dark Angel's High Command received word that the War Master Horus and his 16th Legion had renounced their oaths of allegiance to the Emperor, along with the Primarch Angren's World Eaters, Mortarian's Death Guard, and Fulgrim's Emperor's Children. They also received word of the atrocity committed against the doomed world of Istvan III, when Horus ordered it to be virus-bombed to eliminate the remaining loyalist studies from those four traitor legions still active upon it, rendering it a lifeless dead world. The War Master knew that the Emperor would respond with all the force he had available. Johnson believed that the Dark Angel's deployment to the Shield Worlds on Horus's orders was part of an effort to scatter the Imperium's most loyal servants as far as possible in order to minimize the number of legions he would have to face at any given time. Even so, the strike force of seven full Space Marine legions ordered to the Istvan system in response to the War Master's treachery posed a dire threat to his survival as they made their way towards his forward operating base on the world of Istvan V. The Battle of Diamat L. Johnson's forces were too deeply enmeshed in the shield worlds of the Gordian League to respond quickly to Horus's betrayal. The best estimates of the Primarch staff indicated that it would take them nearly eight solar months to conclude their offensive operations, even on an emergency basis, and reposition themselves for a strike against Istvan V. Even if they could move more quickly, Horus's agents would be able to alert him in time to organize a counter-strike. However, Johnson believed that a small hand-picked force might accomplish what an entire legion could not. He issued orders for many of the Dark Angels' reserve squadrons to resupply and prepare for immediate deployment to the Tanagra system. Their primary target was to secure the forge world of Diamat. 
They could not afford to let the War Master acquire the substantial supplies and ordnance needed to fortify the world of Istvan V against the approaching Loyalist strike force. Al Johnson would personally lead the expedition to Diamat with a battle group of 15 warships. Secrecy was vital, as the Primarch was aware that the War Master's agents were more than likely tracking their movements. He went to Diamat in order to secure several powerful continental siege machines known as Ordinati, vast artillery pieces that could devastate the most powerful fortifications. The small fleet of Dark Angel's vessels arrived in the Tanagra system just five solar days after the destruction of Horus's landing force at the Xanthus starport. With no way to secure the siege machines held in storage in Diamant depots from L. Johnson's Astartes, the Admiral of the raiding fleet had little choice but to withdraw back to the Istvan system. The War Master's final gambit had failed. Following this small victory at the Battle of Diamat, L. Johnson met with his fellow brother Primarch Perturabo of the Iron Warriors Legion aboard his flagship, the Invincible Reason. Perturabo informed him that the 4th Legion was en route to the Istvan system to face the War Master and his traitor legions upon the black sands of Istvan V. Pharos Manus and the Iron Hands Legion had hastened ahead of them, hungry to claim the Emperor's vengeance against Horus. Perturabo lied to El Johnson, explaining that he had hoped that his legion could provision his vessels at the Xanthos starport above Diamat before continuing to the combat zone. Of course, they were now unable to, as the first legion had destroyed the orbital port. Perturabo inquired of El Johnson how he had learned of the existence of the Ordinati siege engine. Johnson explained that he had discovered them 50 Tehran years earlier when he was studying the history of the Great Crusade and saw a reference to them in a dispatch from Horus that had been sent to the Emperor. Horus had commissioned the colossal siege machines from the Masters of Diamat during the long siege of the Xenos Fortress States on Tethonus. The war machines took much longer for the Forge Masters to complete than planned. By the time they were finished, the campaign on Tethonus had been over for a standard year and a half, and Horus had moved on to other conquests. So, the weapons were put into a depot on Diamat for the day when the War Master would come to claim them. But then, the Istvan III atrocity occurred. When Johnson had received word of Horace's perfidy, he knew that ultimately the War Master's path would lead to terror. Even if he were somehow to prevail against Perturabo and the other legions sent to confront him in the Eastvan system, the War Master couldn't claim total victory so long as the Emperor was safe in his palace. For Horus to triumph, the Emperor had to die, and that meant a long and costly siege of Terra. Therefore, the War Master would come to claim the siege engines of Diamat. L. Johnson informed his brother that he would be unable to accompany the Loyalist fleet to Diamat as he had to make all haste to the shield worlds of the Gordian League and prepare the rest of the First Legion for the trip to Terra. In fact, he thought it best if no one outside Perturabo himself and the other Primarchs ever knew that he was there. 
He didn't want the Emperor to believe he did anything at Diamat with an ulterior motive in mind. Perturabo agreed that it was both a prudent choice and a very humble one. L. Johnson explained that his actions were done for the good of the Imperium not for accolades, nor for power. But he also confessed a certain jealousy. He believed Horus had become the Emperor's favorite son for no other reason than fate. Had he been the first of the Primarchs to be found, L. Johnson believed he would have been the War Master instead. The Lion also believed that Horus would inevitably be defeated, and that the Emperor would need to choose a new War Master very quickly if the Great Crusade was to continue. He asked for Perturabo's support. The two Primarchs ultimately reached an understanding. L. Johnson granted permission for the Iron Warriors to take possession of the siege engines at their convenience, on one condition. He made his brother promise that the Ordinati would be put to good use. Perturabo assured his brother that they would be, never letting on that he had already sworn himself to Horus's rebellion and would participate only solar months later at the Drop Site Massacre on East Van 5 where three loyalist legions were almost completely destroyed. The Framas Crusade Following the victory of the Drop Site Massacre, Horus called a meeting of the Primarchs of eight of the traitor legions, minus the participation of the Alpha Legion's Primarch, Alpharius. Aboard his flagship, the Vengeful Spirit. Five of the Primarchs, including four who had fought at Istvan V, met in person, including Horus, Fulgrim, Angren, Mortarion, and Lorgar. Three appeared through the use of hololithic emitters that transmitted their signals through the warp, including Perturabo, Conrad Kurz, and Magnus the Red, who had only recently joined the traitors after the scouring of Prospero when the broken remains of his 15th legion had been transported by Zinch into the Eye of Terra to the planet of the Sorcerers. The Thousand Sons, bitter at what they perceive as their betrayal by the Emperor, now willingly became the Ninth Traitor Legion. The Council of Traitor Primarchs made their plans for the next step in their war against the Emperor, and then each Legion went its way according to its assigned role. In 07M31, Conrad Kurz's fleet departed, bound for the planet of Sagwalsa, a remote world in the eastern fringe that lay shrouded in the shadow of a great asteroid belt. From there, the Night Lord's Legion's terror troops would begin a campaign of genocide against the Imperial strongholds of Heroldar and Thramas, star systems that, if not taken, would leave the flanks of the War Master Strike on Terra vulnerable to attack. This campaign would also delay the Dark Angels Legion from reinforcing the Loyalists. The Thramas system was of particular importance, as it comprised a number of Mechanicum Forge worlds whose loyalty was still to the Emperor. This bitterly contested campaign, known as the Thramas Crusade, dragged on for nearly three standard years. In an attempt to sway his brother, Lionel Johnson, to Horace's cause, the Night Haunter left a deep void beacon in the patrol path of one of the Dark Angel's Outrider vessels. 
The beacon was set to transmit coordinates in advance, so that the two Primarchs could meet and parlay on the planet of Tsagualsa. Nighthaunter wanted to break his former brother, either mentally, physically, or both, to obtain his objectives. The Primarchs were accompanied by two warriors from their personal honor guards to the parlay. The meeting began amicably enough between the two as they conversed with relative civility. This amity lasted only until the Night Haunter slandered L. Johnson, and in return, the lion struck his former brother. This melee further degenerated into an all-out brawl between the two sides, as Kurz strangled the life out of L. Johnson. One of the Dark Angels on our guardsmen ran his sword through the Night Haunter's back, saving his Primarch's life. Eventually, both legions sent reinforcements in response to this incident. Each side dragged away their respective Primarchs from the scene of the combat. Both of them survived this brutal confrontation and went on to continue the contest between their legions for control of the Aegis subsector. The Battle of Perditus in 08 M31, the Dark Angels received intelligence from an astropathic message from the nearby Perditus system about traitor movements. They immediately moved to intercept. Upon arrival, they interrupted the month-long conflict between the Iron Hand's 98th Clan Company led by Casalir Loramek and a large Death Guard contingent led by First Captain Callas Typhon. Both sides have been fighting over an ancient sentient device known as the Tuchalcha Engine. This device was part of a triumvirate of similar sentient devices, another being the Ouroboros and the third unnamed engine, which when combined could create temporal rifts that bridge space and time. On its own, the Tuchulcha was capable of precise and extremely efficient warp jumps. Faced with the prospect of fighting the entirety of the much larger First Legion fleet, both sides retreated from the planet's surface at the Lion's request. Wary of both sides' motives, especially those of the Death Guard's first captain, Callus Typhon, the Lion prevented the device from falling into the Death Guard's hands. He proceeded to serve his own ambitions and requisition the device for his own use. He then ordered the destruction of Perditus, much to the consternation of both commanders. He used the Chalcha engine to make a warp jump, but during their sojourn through the Materium, the Dark Angels were beset by demons. The Lion reinstituted his Legion's Librarian Corps to fight these nefarious warp spawn creatures. As this was in direct violation of the Emperor's Decree Absolute at the Council of Nicaea, this caused a dispute within the Legion that eventually came to a head when the enraged Lion slew Chaplain Nemiel. During the height of the Battle of Perditus, the Lion encountered the greater demon of Zinj, known as Kairos, Fate Weaver, who attempted to convert the Primarch to the cause of the Ruiner's powers, but failed miserably as he had nothing to sway the Lion to their cause. He told the foul creature that absolute loyalty to the Emperor was reward enough, and impale the Lord of Change through its black heart. At the same time, he mockingly asked the demon 
if he had foreseen his defeat. Hunting the Night Haunter Utilizing the Tuchelcha engine a second time, the Dark Angels were able to execute a meticulously planned ambush on the Night Lord's fleet while it was in transit across the Tsagualsa sub-sector that saw the back of the Night Lord's legion broken and their Primarch mortally wounded after having faced his brother L. Johnson once again in mortal combat. Thanks to the skilled coordination and superb execution of the Lion, the Night Lord's fleet was devastated losing dozens of capital ships and approximately one quarter of their legion fleet to the Dark Angel's assault. Unfortunately, the remainder of the Night Lord's fleet fled the Angel's wrath, taking their critically wounded Primarch with them before the Lion could finally end his wretched life. Later, after a period of recovery, crews his first captain Savatar and the elite Night Lords Atramenta Terminators led a desperate boarding assault action upon the Dark Angel's flagship Invincible Reason. This resulted in the death of all but a dozen of the Atramenta and the capture of Savatar and the remaining survivors. Conrad Kurz fled El Johnson's wrath invading the angels for solar months, stalking the shadows within the bowels of their flagship, and continued to wreak terror and chaos amongst the mortal crew. The Night Lord's Primarch also killed every hunter-killer team sent by the Lion to hunt him down. After losing several squads of Dark Angels, the Lion himself took up the hunt for Kurz, stalking him throughout the Invincible Reason for the next 16 solar weeks. However, he could never find his elusive brother Primark. At some point, the remaining Night Lord's captives somehow managed to effect their escape and fled into the void.